churn 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 so i have always been talking about churn analysis so i i do have an end to end machine learning project which is telecom churn retention apart from that i also have a very good eda session on churn analysis uh in one of my very previous videos 6 months 7 months back i was uh, giving an end to end session on power bi again in that i showed you how to create a churn analysis dashboard which was very similar to this but today's topic is again going to be on churn analysis but it's going to be specially for the power bi report <laughs> now it's a series of three videos i'll be releasing three videos separately and it will focus entirely on the end to end power bi project and it will definitely be helpful for people who are uh, going for the business analyst roles or data analyst roles okay now this is how the dashboard will look like but this is not just a single dashboard as you can see i have prepared five different reports and this is an end to end project so of course i will be going through each and every part of it but just have a sneak peek of the dashboard now this is how the home page looks like we have summary we have the customer details uh, we have churn reasons and we have ask a question this is the home page it looks like a website this is how i have been created i have created this i'll also show you from the app.powerbi.com and then you can look at the summary summary basically gives you an entire picture of the entire customer population and the churner profiles so it gives you an idea okay this is how the entire population data looks like and this is how the churner profile looks like so by looking at the data itself you will be able to point out okay these are the differences and then i have another report or another dashboard for customer details which will have individual customer details i have a slicer here as you can see i can select the customer ids and then based on the customer ids all the details will be shown let's say okay uh, somehow this ask a question came okay so we have personal details other details and phone services what's the contract type what's the payment method what's the total charges what is the churn index score that means 34% chances are that this customer might churn right and of course we have used some machine learning predictive uh, uh, model building i'll talk about that and then this this basically tells you that what is the risk level of this particular customer is it low risk is it high risk and all those things then i have churn reasons which will give an entire picture about the churner profiles like we have 2057 risk customers the average risk score is 26.57 of the entire population the total charges of the entire population is 16 million but 2.42 million is at stake for the company because these are the risky customers and our main aim is to retain them so that this money can be you know you can secure this money and this is how the 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 bar graph looks like 3400 something non risky customers we don't have to worry about them low risky risky and high risky of course once we identify this category we can then take a next next step to recommend them some offers so let's see and this is how the average total charges looks like and very like 0.4k and 1.6k total charges is at stake and ask a question dashboard is there to ask a particular question this is i, I haven't designed this report uh, this is an inbuilt functionality of power bi and even i haven't framed this questions this questions are automatically done okay i have just used a background and i have uh, used an ask a question uh, visualization so what it does is if you just click on any question let's say i click on this and it gives you an output like okay so what is the percentage of churn so probably 17.76% people who are having 0 to 20 uh, 10 year length might churn so this is how it looks like now i have divided this uh, video into multiple uh, parts it's going to be a video for 
almost three parts the first part is going to be on the business understanding because when i release any project i don't release just the code part or the model building part because this is one of the most common mistake which a candidate does is that they just directly take the code and just copy paste it and write it in the resumes so well that's fine to some extent but some of the drawbacks in this process is uh, uh just one second just want to check okay everything is fine so the only drawback in this process is that uh, you know uh, they don't understand what's the business problem they don't understand uh, i mean what's what's the exact impact of the problem how businesses are going to be impacted how they are going to be benefited from the output of it so the first video of this series will be uh, the, uh, of this churn analysis power bi end to end project series will be on business understanding we will explain what the use case is all about the second part is going to be eda now as we already know that eda okay eda is nothing but exploratory data analysis getting data insights now ed can be done in multiple ways it can be done in python it can be done in power bi it can be done in excel but as this is a power bi uh, related thing we will do everything in power bi but in case if your interest level is on the python part it's okay i mean anybody can do ed in any of the uh you know text stacks they like to if they are more comfortable on excel they can do it on excel there is no such compulsion on that part but in case you are interested in python based eda i have an end to end you know uh end to end document for it end to end code for it i'll also leave this link in the description below so that you can check it out but this particular video this particular series of videos is going to be dedicated to the power bi okay so let's get started the first topic is going to be business understanding second part i will release for eda in power bi and the third part will be the dashboard where i will explain how i have created the dashboard of course i cannot create the dashboard immediately in front of you guys but uh, i'll i'll tell you how i have created so let's get quickly started on this telco retention now every everybody tells me that why you always speak about retention 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 it's one of the most common topics now even though it's one of the most common topics many people many people know about it what's exactly what exactly it is but many people fail to explain the details why and what of this particular business problem so of course i do have more videos coming in honestly speaking i have i'm working hard uh, there is a video on hate crime in usa i am also working on one of the cricket analysis dashboards where i will show you the end to end cricket analytics and many more videos i also have one video related to cyber security so within a span of one month i am going to release three more projects apart from this one so just you know uh be with me so let's get started guys as you already know my name is satyajit patnaik and welcome back to my channel and let's get started with the business understanding part so telco retention how data science can be used to address telco churn again this is a very high level agenda i'm not going to cover each and everything but the basics of it so that you understand i'll also leave some of the slides to you so that you can check it later on so the background is that operators are losing a share in today's competitive market there are a lot of telco companies in india and when jio comes in with a very low package uh, there is a lot lot of loss to other vendors as well and many people many people are leaving their companies and going to some other companies for example i'm i was I, um, let's say i was working let's say i was using vodafone couple of months back airtel gave me an offer and i moved to airtel uh, today jio is giving me a good offer i'll move to jio so portability is a very common issue in india and it's very easily done that is the reason people are like easily churning companies and when a customer leaves the company or gets churned it's very difficult it's very difficult to get a new customer right so always companies focus on retaining the customers when it comes to the business retaining a customer is more profitable as compared to getting a new customer 
getting a new customer is a headache now i have i have been working in telecom churn things and all those things since quite a long time uh, I, i know the pain right so tougher telecom environment smarter and more demanding customers yes and uh, so telecom churn so subscriber churn can be of multiple categories there could it's not just uh, vendor churning let's say you are moving from vodafone to airtel it's not about that internally within vodafone itself or internally within xyz telecom itself there are different categories of churning if you look at this particular graph or particular image you will be able to understand that majorly in telecom there are four types of subscriber churn the first type is tariff plan churn which is today you were you were in a 599 plan and tomorrow you are moving to a 299 plan so straight 300 rupees loss to the company per month just calculate it for one year 3600 loss for one customer let's say thousands and thousands of customer do this there's a loss in millions right so tariff plan churn is going to be the first category the second one is going to be service churn let's say you were you were a postpaid user and you are churning to a prepaid part or probably okay sorry so that's product churn my my bad service churn is basically uh, let's say you have you are a prepaid subscriber you have uh, uh, you have internet plan you have uh, night plan you have sms plan or something and you have that a monthly plan so you're moving from a monthly plan to a weekly plan or maybe cutting down some services so that's basically a service churn for example uh, you are using mobile data pack but you installed wifi which which made your life easier and better services so you are probably not going to use the mobile data plans right so that's a service churn for the company and the next part is product churn product churn is basically you are churning the products so prepaid and postpaid is one of the products as well so you are using pre sorry you are using postpaid you are on a 999 plan so the company is definitely getting that monthly uh, you know cost to the company right so when you churn from postpaid to prepaid oftenly it's seen that many people become inactive they their usage is less so it's a it's a it's a win win situation for the subscriber but from the company's point of view they will go into loss because in prepaid there is no certainty right you can you can recharge today you can recharge after 2 months but in postpaid guaranteed income to the company guaranteed month uh, monthly charges company charges right and the last part is going to be usage churn again usage churn is inactive to zero usage let's say uh, again same thing like you are using a let's say free call package everything is free but the usage is decreasing so ultimately you try to cut down the plans as well so there are multiple different uh, forms of subscriber churn our major thing in telecom is to identify the category of it so if you just identify that mr xyz is going to churn that might not help you you might need to understand why that subscriber is going to churn if you know why he is churning if he falls under any of these categories then you can provide them some good advice or some recommendation for example you know that he's churning because of the tariff plan thing you give them some offers or something like that let's say you know that he's churning because of the service plan thing you give them some offers so that they can they can retain that right so okay let's move ahead so this is basically the decision cycle of a subscriber why people churn there could be multiple reasons the the obvious most obvious reasons what i can think of is money and service right but there's a lot of things happening in the subscriber's mind which has been elaborated in this particular image let's say the decision cycle of a sub- subscriber is like i'm a mobile customer and there are two two different thinkings right i have thought about churning and i haven't thought about churning so we'll go ahead with i haven't thought about churning then there is there are three different categories i haven't thought about churning because it's too complex or i don't have time so that's basically me i i always think about churning because of uh when i was in in india i was i was using vodafone i had a lot of issues but 
i i was very loyal to them like i was i wasn't churning because i was very lazy so people who are very lazy they th- they haven't thought about churning because it's too complex it's too time taking kon jayega wahan pe karne ke liye and all these things it's a headache let's just move ahead i'm fine paying 599 so that kind of customers are inert subscribers the second one is i haven't thought about churning because my operator is the best so that is basically my father my father has been using bsnl since quite a long time and is very happy with it for him even if jio comes in 49 rupees plan unlimited still he will be sticking to bsnl because he's very loyal and he is a bsnl user since long time and that kind of customers are unconditionally loyal the third category is i haven't thought about churning because i am stuck with a contract now obviously this doesn't happen in india if i uh, believe correctly but outside india many telco companies they sell uh, reduced prices for a contract period for example 12 months 24 months 36 months of, for example 100 dollars monthly plan but if you take a 12 months contract it becomes 800 dollars so which is like under under 70 dollars a month and if you take it for 24 months it could be like uh, 1400 dollars which is uh, 1400 means under 60 dollars a month right so people usually go for it and they are locked in any contract and they are not able to move these kind of customers are locked in customers the the second category uh, will be i have thought about churning and i am not locked in any contract so again i have thought about churning i don't have any contract but i have decided to stay so I'm thinking to churn. I don't have any contract, but it's okay. Let's continue. Let's see what what Vodafone brings in. I'm just hoping that tomorrow everything will be all right. So these type of customers are conditionally loyal, so they can be converted easily. Let's say Airtel tries to use some technique and try to approach them. These type of customers could fall, right? And the second one is. I don't have any contract I have thought about churning and I have decided to leave for sure so these are your risky customers and again the three different categories are because I found a better offer conditionally churner that means they are never happy with any kind of services today Vodafone tomorrow Airtel next day if Jio gives them a good offer they will move to Jio these are conditional churners because my needs have changed these are lifestyle migrators again same category they their needs can change any time and they are not loyal at all because i'm not satisfied so now these are basically the actual customers who are not satisfied because of services because of some other reasons so we can we can focus on the unsatisfied churners as well so these two number 2 and number 3 are very difficult to convert uh number 1 yes they are loyal so you have to be also providing some offers and all those things in a regular basis to retain them unsatisfied churners the first thing is that if we identify a churner as an unsatisfied churner our duty is to go to them talk to them and make them feel good understand their problem and then recommend something so this is the entire decision cycle of a subscriber now i am pretty much sure if you are watching this video tomorrow if you are writing churn analysis in your resume you will have a better story to explain now and these type of stories are very much liked by the interviewers they will really be very happy if you tell this this kind of storytellings and of course as i already told you churn analysis is not just for telecom in the market in 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 google A lot of blogs are there related to telecom churn, but trust me, telecom churn is not just the only project. Churn analysis, retention is present in any field. In my previous company, in one of the financial, in in one of the insurance companies, I have also worked on churn analysis. So, any kind of industry, gaming industry, churn analysis. People download games. Tomorrow they switch to another games. Churn analysis, right? People churn, banking. any kind of industry you speak about e-commerce today i'm using google.com tomorrow i might go to bing.com so i have churned google so google might be thinking about why this customer is churning so 
beat any industry guys so don't just relate it to telecom churn if your if your domain is into banking prepare banking churn if your domain is into e-commerce e-commerce churning so you don't have to write telecom churning as a project in your resume right you can relate what is this you can formulate your own ppt related to your own domain okay so these are your four churn segments loyalty drivers for each segment conditionally loyal subscriber conditional churners conditionally loyal subscribers are basically this category the number one category you can see they frequently reevaluate they choose brand or uh, on on oh, sorry they choose brand on semi rational basis they like to change to test new products right my video is there so i'm not able to see conditional churners uh, lifestyle migrators these are uncontrollable change in needs behavior in voluntary churn unsatisfied churner they are unsatisfied subscribers right so i'll not talk about all these things these are basically how to create the data science model part how to build loyalty and all these things this is a very high level overview of the data science led approach first thing is eda capture and analyze second part is report and predict once you predict it then comes your recommendation part where you can recommend the offers to the customers trust me many people don't know about the third step many people who write churn analysis in their resumes they don't know about this part the recommendation part okay so they know about the capturing they know about the pr prediction part so let's get started i mean let's get ahead how to collect the data uh, this is the major task of a data analyst okay data could be anything it could be customer profile data it could be usage data it could be feedback data it could be uh, customer uh, uh, when you are calling to the customer care those kind of audio data it could be anything so first as a data analyst our task is to capture as much data as possible okay that could be from one different source one team that could be from multiple teams but when it comes to industries you might be able to answer better because it all depends in mnc's multiple teams own multiple databases let's say team x is the owner of customer details team y is the details of customer recharge details team c is the owner of the customer service related queries details so you have to talk to them and grab inputs grab data and then comes your unstructured to structured data formatting data cleaning and all these things okay that's part of your eda same goes with the business analyst as well but business analysts are more focused towards the business understanding okay capture analyze i'll not talk about these things again building a predictive churn model building a churn model is not the aim of this particular series i'm not going to explain you how to create a predictive model how to create a churn model if you are looking for churn model just search for end to end machine learning project satyajit you will get a related data to this like i have a end to end python based model part okay you go for that but this is a power bi thing so i'm not going to explain the model building part like i'll explain but very high level so this is all about uh, this uh, ppt is a lot it speaks about a lot of things but for the power bi part i think that's more than enough business understanding and all those things so that's it for today's video guys uh, that's it for this part and next part will be on the eda and of course the third part will be on the dashboard so stay tuned and watch out my channel for the latest videos please subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for getting the notifications earlier and please like and share the video thank you